If you're looking for the best video setting for your Nikon Z6 camera, then check this out. What's up guys, Myung here from Prodigy Studios. Now, just real quickly, I wanted to talk about how much I love Nikon. I've been with Nikon since 2003 with the D70 back in the days. And I know for some of you guys, that's a long time ago. That's when I started my uh, photography business back then. And it's taken me all over the world and I've been blessed to just have a lot of opportunities because of it. And when I shot videos back then as well, I used to use those big Sony cameras with the mini DV tapes and they were very pain to kind of use because when you import them, you have to import them in real time. You put that little tape inside a little player and then once you push play, then you import to computer and you have to kind of wait around. If you have an hour tape, it takes an hour to import. And thank God nowadays, it's just a little SD card transfer and like matter of seconds, you have all these videos, right? But anyways, with Nikon, I finally got to use Nikon camera as a video camera when D90 came out in 2008 and that just changed everything. I was so excited. All of my videos back then looked like a regular home video, you know? It was a fixed lens. I couldn't really get a depth of field. I couldn't get the bokeh. It was just like a home video would look, right? But with a Nikon D90, I was able to put all my prime lenses in there and now you could get this beautiful blurry bokeh background depth of field, all these different lenses you could play with, and you get this cool look, and that totally changed everything. And from then on, just everything, all the uh, video uh, business out there just changed dramatically, right? Canon and all these other companies were coming out with amazing video cameras for us to play with, and it jumped from mini DV tapes to SD cards and beyond. So finally, starting last year with a Z-series camera, Nikon finally stepped up their video game. So before then, from 2008 to, you know, about last year, Nikon D70 and all those other cameras, they all had video features, but nobody really wanted to use a Nikon camera to, for their video quality. It, I mean, it did an okay job, but there was just a lot of features that was missing compared to the Panasonics and the Canons where they were very focused on video. So... They were really cool to use for video, but we're not Nikon. I used it a couple of times here and there, but it didn't feel like a proper video camera. So, you know, I ended up just using my Nikon cameras for just photos and then jumped into Panasonic and Sony and all the other brand for videos. But finally, with the Nikon Z6, Nikon is at top of their game. I mean, this thing, you could pay extra 200 bucks to unlock ProRes RAW, as long as you have, of course, the Atomos Ninja. It shoots in log and 10-bit ProRes with the Atomos uh, Ninja. And without it, it has a beautiful video quality. The colors are amazing right off the bat. Um, it's got all these video features in here, and it's just a perfect video camera. Now, I really enjoy using the Nikon Z6 more than I do with the Nikon uh, Panasonic GH5. Okay, now that's just a little uh, behind story, but let's go straight into the best video setting, in my opinion, that I recommend you use for your Nikon Z6. First off, make sure your switch is on the uh, video camera icon, and that's when you, that's how you use this camera to shoot video. It's very cool like that. You can switch to shoot photos or switch to shoot video, and that's kind of very intuitive compared to other cameras out there. Uh, so I'm gonna mess around with all the uh, I button option right there, and this is basically, Nikon made, was smart about it. They put all the real options that you need right on this uh, I button option. So we're gonna go through this, make the changes. I'm gonna give you some tips uh, and explain some of them to you. And here we go. So the very first one is the set picture control. Well, I love the neutral color. They have flat. It's not like log. It's not um, high dynamic range, like how a lot of log videos are. It's just, a picture a standard color, but they kind of, you know, brought up the shadows, brought down the highlights, and they try to make it as flat as possible uh, using their software. So flat is okay, but now you got to spend time to color all of them. So to me, neutral is my favorite because let's say you use standard. Everything is super vibrant and saturated, and it's hard to tone down saturation once it's saturated. It kind of loses its original color when you try to bring that down. But with neutral, everything is kind of in a neutral color, 
That's why they say neutral, obviously. And then you have an option to either make it saturated or, you know, make it kind of, it gives you a little bit more control over how you can color your video. Sadly to say the video bit rate of a Nikon Z6 for HD is only 28 megabits per second. So not that much information compared to like my GH5, you could shoot it in 400 megabits per second where you could have big control over color uh, adjustments. But you know, for now, it's not really meant for heavy uh, color grading and it does a pretty decent job when you, when you do decide to grade it minimally. So neutral to me is my favorite one um, out of all the picture profile. All right, so the next one is frame size and uh, image quality. So when it comes to frames um, per second, FPS, obviously you wanna shoot in 24 FPS. And if you wanna reach 24 FPS um, properly, you need to have your shutter times two. So that means your shutter needs to be 50, 60, just around that area, right? To get the most cinematic look possible. It creates a little bit of motion blur. And a lot of the cinematic movies out there has that feel. It's, but it, you don't have to stick to that rule. Um, you could change it to, you know, the same speed. If it's 24 FPS, you could, it gives you an option to go all the way down to a, a lower shutter speed. And uh, you could even make it higher if you want to, but just know that it has a different kind of look. So like if you see a lot of uh, Kung Fu movies, fighting movies, they have a higher shutter count and that just gives you that fast movement um, that just looks exciting, right? And then if you wanna bring it down to 24, then it just has a smoother, softer, more motion blur kind of look to it, uh, which is kind of more soothing in the eye. So you wanna do that. And to reach the times two of your FPS, right? So if you're 24 FPS and you wanna reach 50 uh, shutter speed, then obviously outside you can't do that because it's gonna be blown out. Then you have to use a variable ND filter. Then it allows you to darken up your lens and then use that proper shutter speed that you wanna use. Change it to 60 if you are not sure if you wanna use a slow motion of that shot or if you wanna keep it at 24 or not. So at least it gives you, you can bring that 60 frames into a 24 FPS timeline and it'll kind of give you that 24 FPS look, but it also has that option to just slow it down 50% uh, to give you a slow motion. And then of course, Nikon Z6 is cool because it gives you an option to shoot in 100 um, FPS and 120 for that super slow motion. And the cool thing about the Z6 compared to other cameras is that it also captures the audio. In other cameras, if you do a slow motion capture, no audio is caught, it just records in slow motion. But with Nikon Z6, it captures the audio and it plays back like a normal video too. So then you could slow it down or just kind of keep it the way it is. So it's nice to have that option just in case you made a mistake switching to 100 frames per second and you want it to be a normal video. So it's kind of nice to have that option. The next option is choose your image area. Now, first off, go into your menu, then go into the pencil icon, then go into movie, and then go to custom control assignment, and then change that first setting into choose image area. Now, what this does is I use a lot of prime lenses to shoot videos with my Z6, and you can push the little FN button on the top here, and it instantly gives you an option to select your image area. So the cool thing about that is that if you have a 35 millimeter, then you could actually sh change it to a DX mode and it crops in, it zooms in a little bit. So like every prime lens that you have, it kind of becomes a zoom lens in a way. It crops in and it does crop in the uh, sensor, but it's the image still looks amazing. So you don't really have to worry too much about that. It's already a full uh, frame sensor anyway. So even cropping into DX is still a bigger sensor than a micro four third that I, I'm used to using. And the cool thing about this too is that it usually knows what lens that you put in. So if you put in a crop sensor lens, then it knows and it'll zoom in automatically. Uh, and if you use a full frame lens, then it'll know and it'll zoom out. Skip the uh, Wi-Fi connection because obviously that's so that you can connect to your phone and download images and control your camera with that. So the next one is electronic VR. You could turn this on or off, and when you turn it on, it does an amazing job acting like a tripod. So if you hold still and it, 
kind of freezes a little bit to get your shot. And that is one of the biggest reason why the Z6 is so much better than the previous Nikon cameras to shoot video because none of the cameras in the past had a VR, electronic VR. So you would always have to use a tripod, shoulder mount, something heavy to keep it steady because otherwise it's gonna sense your little micro jitters from your hands. So it, it was never useful. I don't wanna carry around tripod with me all the time, especially if I'm shooting small parties or events and I need to move around a lot, right? So anyways, with the electronic VR, it gives you a steady shot just hand holding it. Now, it's not meant for you to move around. If you try to like get a gimbal kind of shot moving in and out or left and right, it wobbles the image. It gives it a weird warp. So it's not meant for that. It's meant for you to just stay still and get your shot. And it's still an amazing thing to have in your camera. AF area mode. On this one, I keep it at auto area AF. And this way it could be used with the eye detection. If you have uh, cats and dogs, it could also do animal eye detection. So if you kind of want to rely on its automatic um, focus feature, then just leave it there and, and it'll try to catch a person and then it'll try to catch their face and then it'll catch their eye. And if there's multiple people around you, then you could easily push the uh, D-pad to select uh, which face to focus on. And the worst case scenario, if it just becomes very hectic and you need to focus fast right away, you could just easily tap on the screen. Like let's say you're uh, the bride that's shooting at a wedding. You could tap on her face and it'll track her face. So if she moves around, it'll focus as she's walking. Maybe she's coming down the ceremony aisle and it'll track her face as she's walking towards you. So it's very intuitive. No autofocus is really that amazing. Even my GH5 has a decent autofocus, but it's not perfect. And same with the Nikon Z6, it's not that perfect, but it's still way, way, way better than any of the other Nikon um, that ever came out when it comes to video. So next one is white balance. I personally think that the automatic white balance on a Nikon Z6 does an amazing job just, just finding the right color. But a lot of the times when I'm shooting indoors and there's a lot of warm orange light, then it kind of finds somewhere in the, uh, in the middle. The white isn't really that white because obviously it's more orange because of the orange light. Now, luckily, a lot of the walls are white. So when you go into the menu, push the D-path to the left, you go to pre-1. If you hold down the OK button, it'll bring up a square, and then now you could point at a white wall or a gray card or a white card or white paper or anything like that, and then push OK. And, the auto and then, then it sets the uh, white balance. It does a great job at it too. So that's the real quick way of setting your white balance. Also, I have my second function button down here uh, for auto, uh, white balance as well, in case you need to get that white balance a lot quicker because a lot of the gigs that you're shooting is like a running gun situation. So go into the menu, pencil icon, movie, and then change that uh, option right here. All right, the next menu is volume. Now, first off, go into the menu, then go into your camcorder menu, then you scroll all the way down till you get to attenuator, then you make sure that this is enabled. It's disabled by default, but you want this on. And what this is, is if you have a person, you know, screaming or woo, then it does a decent job capping that audio and it won't distort it. I mean, obviously if you scream too loud, then it can reach there. Um, unlike the GH5 where it just forcefully uh, shuts it down, but it still does an amazing job at it. Cause I do have to admit a lot of the, uh, clients that I have, you know, they get kind of loud. I have a lot of clients who love to yell and scream and have a good time in front of the camera. And it's perfect to have this on and make sure that their audio doesn't peak. So make sure you go into the menu and enable that. Now, when it comes to audio, you don't really want to use the in-camera audio if you are using automatic focus because the focus sound is really loud. So I think the Z series lenses that came I'm exactly for the Nikon Z6. I heard that uh, those lenses don't make a lot of focus sounds, but you know, I've been using a Nikon for so long. I have a bunch of Nikon lenses and I don't want to get rid of it. So they work really well with the Nikon Z6. Even the autofocus works well too, but it's just that it makes a lot of sound trying to focus. It's kind of weird how it does that, but it does. So if you're going to use the in-camera audio recorder, then just keep your camera on manual focus so you don't have to 
hear that kind of focus uh, grinding sound. Active delighting. Now this is kind of cool. I don't use it too often, but it's a, it's a cool way to get the highest dynamic range. It brings up the shadow and I think they do that in a software. I know it's not because of the high dynamic range that this Nikon Z6 has. It's an average the high uh, dynamic range, but this artificially brings up the shadow. So if you're shooting against a window and you kind of want to show uh, what's in the outside instead of blowing it out so that you could increase the exposure inside the room, this deactive lighting into extra high and it'll kind of do a good job giving you a decent HDR look, high dynamic range look. So it's kind of fun to play with. So I, I usually keep it off, but in certain cases, especially when I'm shooting real estate, uh, then I turn that on and try to get that outside, uh, inside shot at the same time. This vibration reduction, uh, the next one is just if your camera has a VR or not. So you could turn that on or off and that's what it reflects. Just in case you were wondering what that is. And then focus. I like to keep mine at full-time autofocus. Now only when it's at full-time autofocus will it be able to use the uh, eye detection, pets, humans. And then it will, it will also activate your continuous tracking if Let's say you have a bride walking down and it locks onto her and it continue captures her. Or if you just have a person who's standing still and then you want to just focus on that one person and get a good shot. So it does everything and it tries its best to figure out what you're trying to do. Uh, you could obviously change it to the, those other two modes. If you're AFS shooting just a person standing still or uh, autofocus continuous, if you know you're just shooting an athlete, you know, running around and stuff. But Keeping it full-time autofocus, it does a good job detecting anything, right? From person sit, standing still to somebody running around. And also the fact, like I said, it detects uh, the eyes uh, for humans and animals too. So I think it does a pretty decent job. So like I mentioned earlier, similar, this is similar to that other uh, focus point in the menu is that um, if by chance it doesn't, catch a person like i'm gonna always go back to the bride walking down right that's to me like the most important uh capture and yet very difficult to do and you only have one chance to do it you can't ask her to walk back and come back again so if you have it on afs and all of a sudden it's not catching her face because let you know she's next to other people walking down or there's all these people in the background just watching and it's getting confused on who to capture you could easily tap on the screen on her face and then it'll detect her face and you get a cool continuous focus shot of uh, the bride coming down. Nikon has never had that feature in the past and all of a sudden when they do have it, they do an amazing job at it. So I love it. I, I've never felt so far on capturing that bride walking down. You do have to think fast though <laughs> because if something doesn't work properly, it is a machine so it's, it's never perfect then at least it has multiple options to get that shot, whether it's automatic or manual. Worst case scenario, flip the, uh, your lens from autofocus to manual and just manually catch it. The uh, back screen to me is clear enough, a high pixelation, high pixel monitor that I could actually see if the bright is in focus or not. I've had other cameras like um, my GH5 where the back screen is too small and I can't, I can't really tell if the person is in focus because it's just not high quality enough. Anyways, uh, that's the very basic video setting for Nikon Z6. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please subscribe and I will see you guys next time.